Hi traders, it's Chris from DAX.co.uk and I'm going to provide a DAX technical analysis summary for today and also take a look at some of the other major markets that I'm looking at at the moment. So I hope you had a good day trading today, it's been interesting to say the least. Um, I'm just taking a look at the economic calendar at the moment to find out what we've actually got left to come up and we know that in the next half an hour, before 35 minutes or so, you've got the minutes from the FOMC meeting being released. So. Uh, that'll be interesting to see what it does. It will definitely have some sort of impact um, on the currency markets, perhaps limited impact on the on the DAX for now. We'll see how it affects it tomorrow. And a couple of interesting things that are on the docket for the rest of the week. And the reason why I'm looking at this is because I'm actually thinking at the moment if we take a look at the daily DAX, chart that I've got here there's a, a fork which I've drawn has been in play for quite some time now um, that we're at the risk of sort of breaching or at least touching the top of again and we kind of just about stayed inside here broke it had a reversal candle massive sell-off went down towards the bottom bounced back up again and I'm wondering how we're going to impact this and I'm looking at the the docket to find out is there anything that's particularly um, if you like, that could act as a catalyst, because we are going to need something to break through this candle. Uh, this, sorry, this uh, this this pitchfork formation at the moment. So, at the moment, we're forming a bit of a doji pattern here, and could suggest that that's going to be the top of this two-day bull run, and then from here we're going to experience a sell-off, and perhaps bring us down to a you know nearer the nine thousand mark, or even just back to where we were in the ninety-two fifty range. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where we close this evening. I'd predicted that we were going to have a bearish day today, and um, I'm certainly not uh, ashamed to say that I was wrong. Um, I lost out on a couple of trades myself today as well. Um, one of them I saved myself some money, I think, because I got out for 15 point loss where it could have been a lot worse. Um, I got out at 94.71, I think. Um, so I've saved myself 15 points. And I'd made a mistake on that trade, which I'll show you in a moment uh, what I did. Or what I didn't do, should I say. So if we take a look at the volume profile, fairly even spread of distribution today. And we started off around about this kind of level. Dropped down, touched the value area low, sorry, um, the deviation low. Cut straight back through the VWAP. Flirted with the deviation high. And broke through, bounced back through the, the VWAP down to the deviation low and just kind of bounced around all over the place. So again, a few traders would have been, again, um, taken to the cleaners a bit today, uh, just riding these bounces, maybe trading a break and, and, and just getting it the wrong way. Um, so indecision candle, fairly small range. I was expecting us to get down towards the naked VPOP today and if we did, perhaps taking out the value area low as well, but we didn't even didn't even trouble it really, and I can't imagine we're going to get there now that we're already at VWAP towards the end of the evening or towards the end of the afternoon, early evening. So this might be where we're going to stay. It might be a small surge one way or the other um, to finish off the evening, but I can't imagine it's going to make a huge amount of ground now. Uh, but of course I might be wrong. Who knows what the FOM two minutes are going to actually provide, if anything, uh, in terms of volatility to the uh, to to this side of the market. So, um, yeah, a couple of trades I got wrong today. In fact, uh, we have actually had a bit of a move already uh, in the last minute or two, uh, or minute or ten, should I say. Um, but uh, I'm not interested in getting into a trade at this time of the night. Um, if I'm not in a position now, I'll wait until the morning. So there are a couple of markets that are quite interesting at the moment, and I'm going to probably look at getting into a trade um, as soon as I've finished up with the video. I'll see if there's anything that I can spot in a moment. But this was the 30 minute chart for the DAX. And if we draw a fib that we've got up here, there's the 50 fib zone down here is probably an interesting opportunity to get in and buy again. Um, or ideally, if you can get closer to the, um, the 93, I think that would probably be better. I think 92.50 we would struggle to stay, would struggle to hit below that. And if we do, then well, we're in for a fairly decent sized correction, I'd have thought. Um, but I think that uh, that would be a spot I'm looking at personally to buy. Um, where we close this evening will be interesting to see whether we can actually close below the pivot for the day. Um, we didn't take out the R1 for today, so uh, we've been fairly compact, if you like. Um, and uh, not a huge amount of volatility today. 
So the mistake I made earlier is that I got into this trade expecting there to be a breakdown with the start of this consolidation that I'd predicted uh, at the beginning of the day. And there was a bit of a move. It was accelerated. I think there was probably confluence with the volume. Yeah, so there was quite a bit of volume on this particular candle here, which suggested that there was going to start to be uh, going to be a, a potential break. And uh, I got into the trade. And it basically touched this line, um, the 9438 line, which it had previously got down to earlier on in the day, around about half past eight this morning. And to the point, it got exactly the same mark there. And over the two candles, two 30 minute candles, it failed to break above, uh, below even. So I should have spotted that. I didn't. Um, I went into the trade. It bounced off the line again. And of course, I uh, was on the wrong end of the trade. What I should have done is traded it had it broken below the pivot. But, you know, um, we live and we learn. So that was what I did wrong. And I got out of the trade early. I only lost 15 points. And if I'd have stayed in there now, I'd have you know been 30 points down. So, you know, I can't be too unhappy with that. Okay, so... Take a look at the other markets and um, we'll try and finish up so I've got enough time to maybe put a trade on um, before I'm done for the evening. So we've got the S&P, which is quite an interesting one at the moment because we had missed the opportunity here. Um, we drew a Fib line all the way up to the peak and said if we get down into the Fib zone, perhaps we can pull the trigger for another long there. Um, didn't manage to get it, missed that one. It happened quite quickly, so... Um, we'll just keep that set up there and, and see if we maybe can catch another one. It also ties in with this kind of channel which I've drawn uh, from the beginning of November, just taking it um, between these two points here and then just doubling that line up. Um, and it's fairly close to the bottom of that channel, so it was a decent risk reward setup. Don't know if we're going to get another one uh, in that particular area, but you know if we do, I might, I might look at pulling the trigger from there. Uh, FTSE is quite interesting as well because we're into the kind of the bottom third underneath the medium line and again I missed that median line should I say um, if we're staying within these two inner thicker lines then I'm trading the range and if we break out of these then I'm trading a breakout above these outer thick lines so it was an opportunity to get in perhaps and, and buy a dip there on the FTSE but I missed that um, but I think anywhere in this sort of general area um, over the next well, early to part of tomorrow, um, we'll, we'll see how the, how price reacts. Um, Euro stocks I'm not trading. The US dollar index I'm not trading. Oil is an interesting one because I'd like to actually get in for a sell here, but I don't want to get caught on the wrong side. Um, just a very very crude setup, I guess. Um, let's just take a look. I think I probably would like to get somewhere closer to this peak here. And for me, hmm, that works out quite nicely there. So around about 76, um, it's a nice round number. Um, if I get anywhere closer to that, I'll be perhaps looking to sell, but you know, it becomes dangerously close to breaking out of a, of a channel. But uh, if I get in here and it starts going up to 76, I'm obviously going to be on the wrong side for 100 points. So I'd rather not. So I'll wait and see. Um, but I think I'm, I've, again, got no shame in admitting the fact that I'm just going to follow the trend here, uh, be a proper sheep, and um, see if I can squeeze some out of it. So uh, I'll come back to that one another time. Gold. I've had a signal to sell gold. Um, I've had a, quite a few signals coming in today. I didn't take, I didn't take them up. But uh, we've got a basic channel here that's been building on the four hour chart and we'll give it the benefit of the doubt to say it wants to stay inside that channel. You know, it broke out and came back inside within the four hour uh, window. So we'll wait and see how price reacts off this channel again um, before we trade. And so the signals that I've had, Euro USD was one of them and that's the one I'm thinking of taking. I'm thinking of taking a short here. We're trapped inside a wedge. Um, we've got this kind of uh, current resistance line with a triple top pattern forming here um, that also has served as previous uh, support um, before so relatively kind of um, valid um, area to break through if we break through that 
we perhaps want to look to see if we get some sort of meaningful breakout or whether there's just a bit of manipulation before we have a sell-off again. Uh, fundamentally, you'd imagine that this currency is primed for a further fall to the downside with the strength of the dollar. Minor sort of weakness at the moment, but it's probably more of a correction than anything else. Um, and the euro with sort of quite a lot of underlying weakness. And news coming out, say, to suggest that you know, Draghi's just going to... Um, weaken the currency to help out a couple of other of the struggling countries at the moment so i like the look of that one but uh, we'll wait and see because it is sort of forming a if you like a setup that suggests it could be taking higher here but you know this is the key level to watch so i've had a signal to sell it whether i take that or not i'm not sure i might just wait for a slightly better level um, but it already looks not too bad in fact i think we were trading at about the 125.51 a minute ago um 54 even so we could have got in slightly better here but what can you do? We'll just wait for and wait and see, wait and see where it goes. I uh, had um, a signal to buy oil, uh, sell the DAX, uh, sell the pound Aussie dollar, buy the new uh, the Kiwi yen, and sell gold. And the only trade that I've got open at the moment is the Euro Swiss, which doesn't seem to be going anywhere uh, at the moment, but uh, quite a, a clear reason for why I want to back this or, or buy this one, and that is because. The 120 level is very significant, and um, we are about as close to that floor as we can really get. And, well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, we could obviously get a little bit closer to it, but I think um, we're about as close as we can, yeah, we can, can expect to get in easily. Um, we might be able to get in slightly further down, but... Very, very soon, I would imagine there's going to be some sort of catalyst. My only concern is that perhaps there's going to be some sort of squeeze, um, you know, and before before any intervention. So, you know, price may well break down below this. And there's a lot of people expecting it to do that. And it might go below a lot of people's stop losses before it flies to the upside again and before there's any intervention. So there's a bit of a risk. But um, as long as we use our stops, I'm sure we'll be fine. So I've taken that trade on. That's still out going. Um, we reversed pretty much immediately from these from this little swing that we experienced earlier but i'm going to keep the trade on and um, we'll see where it goes anyways i'll leave it there um i'm going to go and see what happens with the minute release and uh, see if we can get anything from uh, from some of the wordings and we'll be back in the morning to release another video